all right welcome back and this will be our uh, last sample problem for our topic in stress uh, stresses in beams this problem is taken uh, from the textbook by Phil Pot, and this is example 9.3 page 337 so the problem says a concentrated load P is equal to 36 kn which is applied to the upper end of the pipe as shown so here's our pipe and it has this bolted um, bolted at some support so this is actually a fixed support and here's our load so this is 36 kn so even though it is oriented this way um, even though it is oriented in this vertical direction um, this um, with, with us I mean with respect to the loadings this is uh, this member is experiencing flexural loadings Okay, so therefore the analysis would be um, flexural analysis um, just like what we did okay and it says here the outside diameter of the pipe is 220 mm and the inside diameter is 200 mm determine the vertical shear stress on the yz plane okay, so we have this uh, x x y and z so even though just recall that for a stress element um, we have shear stresses uh, let's say right here going in this direction and recall that there's a complement uh, complementary stress going in this direction okay. okay so what that means is that we are going to find this vertical stress in this YZ plane but again the value is just the same it's just the direction and it's just simply because of the requirements of the equilibrium okay so here's our cross-section um, it's this one is 200 and this one is 220 and here's our section okay so first thing is to solve or to determine the internal shear okay, so if we model this if we model this one it would look something like this right uh, we have a fixed support and let's say it's a hollow section and let's say here's our um, axis and we have a load right here we have a 36 uh, what is this 36 kilonewton load okay so if we draw the shear and moment diagram it would look something like this one here's our V and here's our um, here's our M okay and the distance that we are referring to is the vertical distance okay so for the shear diagram um, actually what, what we'll have here is a is something like this okay. so right here this is I think this is plus um, because this is going in this direction and of course the reaction should be going in this direction I mean in the opposite direction and in terms of moment if this is creating uh, a moment like this I mean with the load is creating a moment uh, at this point of clockwise then there must be a reaction of counterclockwise because this is a fixed support uh, this will be a uh, this will have three reactions okay, so what it will look like is something um, something like this okay so we have a maximum uh, maximum moment at the um, at the support okay but what we're interested in is the shear for now Okay, so for the shear this the value right here this is 36 kn so let's write it here that shear is 36 um, 36 kn okay so the next step is to solve for for i and since this is this is our x and this is our z so it's just 
uh, ix is equal to iz and what we want actually is the value of iz right because here's our uh, here's our load and of course the the bending would be along this axis and this axis is the zz axis so anyway uh, they're just the same the ix and the iz because of the fact that they are um, the cross section is circular so the equation is pi over 64 d to the fourth minus d to the fourth so let's substitute all the values pi over 64 times 220 to the fourth minus 200 raised to uh, to the fourth and what we get is 36.45 times 10 to the six uh, millimeter to the fourth okay now that we have that uh, let's solve for solve for the first moment of area the q okay and q for this shape this is 1 over 12 d cube minus d cube and this is 1 over 12 times 220 cube by the way where did we get this equation so it's just the same as the moment of inertia for uh, regular shapes but right here is just the uh, first moment of area and for hollow sections it's it's like this okay 200 cube okay, and this is equal to um, 220.67 times 10 to the 3 and this is mm cube okay now that you have the i uh, you have the i you have the q and what else So I think we can solve for uh, solving for shear. Okay, so shear, uh, actually shear max. Shear is equal to VQ over IT. And V is 36. Uh, that's in kilonewton, but we need a newton unit. 36,000 times Q of 220.67 times 10 to the 3. And our moment of inertia is 36.425 times 10 to the 6. And the thickness. Okay, so here's the thickness. The thickness would be, uh, of course, along the solid portion only, right? So here's going to be um, the thickness, the sum of this side and this side. Okay, so if this is... Actually, it's just the, uh, the difference between 220 minus 200. And what we get is um, 20 mm right here. And the shear is equal to 10.9 megapascals. Okay, so that's the value of the shear. So again... Um, the shear stress equation or the shear stress formula by the way I forgot to mention this if this is our equation VQ all over IT the shear flow or these parameters VQ and IT this is what they call the shear flow right? shear flow equations uh, shear flow equation which is just um, or shear flow and the symbol for that they use is the small letter Q so it's just VQ all over I right so that's it uh, this is the shear flow equation and so therefore we can express uh, the shear stress as Q all over T as well okay and uh, lastly just um, this shear stress formula this is just um, this is just the same as the Flasher formula um, once you have all the, um, the data like for example the internal forces and the geometric properties once you have all that then you can solve for them for the stresses and just take note of the limitations that I mentioned um, regarding the um, 
the shear stresses okay and also actually that's that's also true for other other equations from which it was derived there must be some some assumptions and therefore uh, the use or the application of those formulas should be limited to to their assumptions only okay and in the next video um i think we'll be moving on to our next topic which is um i'm still thinking about this but uh, probably we'll be we'll be discussing the beam deflections and after that the um, statically indeterminate beams so I, i'm not sure yet if we can cover that in uh, in just one week i mean those two topics but anyway if not then of course we have to separate that so that we can uh we can have an in-depth understanding about those two topics the beam deflections and um statically indeterminate beams because after all that's what we were doing in actual members and in uh in torsional members so if you recall we we did computations regarding um we did have computations regarding um determinate determinate structures right let's say actual and portion uh we also did um non prismatic or composite we refer to it as composite sections uh, meaning comprising of many uh, many um or non uniform or non constant cross sections throughout the the length or let's call it com well, composite shapes or non prismatic and we also did um problems on uh what else we also did problems on deflections right deflections or strains for both torsion and axial so the same with this special members we also need to uh to to go through this topic the deflections beam deflections and also we did statically indeterminate uh, computations regarding statically indeterminate um, actual members or torsional members right and when we say statically indeterminate it just means that the the equilibrium equation is not enough to, to be able to solve the problems and that's why we need the concept of or we need equations okay we need equations coming from okay, coming from the geometry of deformation All right so that's it so that's why um i really want to have this topic um if i mean topic to be discussed the deflections and statically indeterminate beams before we move on to the okay to the final one actually not not the final one but rather the combination uh, let's say combined uh, stresses okay so what will happen if uh, we have all types of stresses acting on the member so we are going to to solve that okay so that's all and uh, see you see you next week